and O children of Adam. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with bountiful, benevolent, magnanimous blessings. Currently, we are witnessing a great blessing from the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is this day of Jumu'ah, the best day upon which the sun rises. This day which our Sharia has cited as a day of Eid in the week of a believer. Just like we have two days of Eid during the year of a believer. And for those who ponder, you will see parallels between the practice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on this day of Jumu'ah and his practices on the day of Eid, such as the bathing that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has encouraged us to do on this day, which is also from the practices of the day of Eid, and attending a prayer in congregation made up of two raka'ah, or a prayer that can only be prayed in congregation, Salatul Jumu'ah, and we find this too on the day of Eid. And then from the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the practice of adorning himself both in clothing as well as with scent and perfume. And this was his practice on the day of Eid as well as a practice of his sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on this day of Jumu'ah. Abu Hurairah radiallahu an, he narrates in a hadith in Sahih Muslim that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أفضل يوم طلعت عليه الشمس يوم الجمعة فيه خلق آدم وفيه أدخل الجنة وفيه أخرج منها ولا تقوم الساعة إلا في يوم الجمعة. He says صلى الله عليه وسلم that the best day upon which the sun rises is this day of جمعة. On this day, Allah سبحانه وتعالى created Adam عليه السلام. And on this day, Allah سبحانه وتعالى entered him into Jannah. And on this day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed him from Jannah. And the coming of the hour, the day of judgment, will not occur except on a Friday, on a day of Jumu'ah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the people of Jannah when the coming of the hour occurs. Ameen. Ya Rabbal Alameen. So this is a blessing from the blessings of Allah. And from the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the month of Ramadan, a month known as a season of worship. A month which is considered the best of all months. A month about which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Sayyidu shuhur shahar Ramadan. That the best of all months and the head of all the months is the month of Ramadan. A month that is less than five months away from us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve us in his obedience and decree that we witness the month of Ramadan. Ameen. And in this month of Ramadan, we find further bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of the fasting, in terms of the last 10 nights of this month. For these last 10 nights are considered a season of worship within a season of worship. And from the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well in Ramadan is the night of power a season of worship, within a season of worship, within a season of worship. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la, la ilaha illallah. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can bless with these bounties and gifts and blessings, subhanahu wa ta'ala. In these last 10 nights, we have the night of power, Laylatul Qadr, a night about which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alf shahr. That the night of power is better than a thousand months. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decree for us many of these nights. Ameen. From the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us, my dear brothers and sisters, is also the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah, another season of worship. After we finish the month of Ramadan and we are sad because of its departure, Allah eases our hurt by giving us the first 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Yet another season of worship in the year of a believer. Another gift and bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. About these days, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْفَجَرْ وَلَيَالٍ عَشَرٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes a qasam by 
these important auspicious days. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam teaches us that any act done in these days will be better than any act done outside of these days. Again, we ask Allah to bless us with life to witness the days of Dhul-Hijjah this year, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. Ameen. From the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O servants of Allah, and O children of Adam, is the winter months. The winter months. Those months that normally are slightly darker in resolution than the summer months. Those months, my dear brothers and sisters, that are more grayer than the normal months. And if the days are extremely cold, we see people walking about with a frown. I don't know why. Because the winter months are from the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon this ummah. And the reason why I say this is because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that ash-shita'u, the winter, rabi'ul mu'min, is the spring for a believer. Allahu Akbar. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who came to bring context to our lives, who came to transform us from being people who see things for what they are to be people who can see things for what they can be. He said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in a hadith reported in Sunan al-Tirmidhi, ash-shita'u rabi'ul mu'min, the winter is the spring of a believer. And in Sunan al-Dara'qutni, another book of hadith, there's an addition in the narration where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explains why the winter months are a spring for a believer. He says, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for the nights are long. And the days are short. Which means what, O servant of Allah? Which means you and I can sleep much of the night, but still wake up during the last third and beg from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when He subhanahu wa ta'ala is at the first heaven for your goodness and my goodness, asking us of our needs so He subhanahu wa ta'ala can answer those needs. We can sleep six hours, perhaps seven hours, perhaps eight hours and still alhamdulillah wake up and catch the last third of the night walillahi alhamd this is why it's the spring of a believer and he sallallahu alayhi wasallam cites the days as short because a believer takes the opportunity to fast during these short days that their days are all about an early breakfast and an early dinner and in some countries really an early breakfast and a late lunch i just came from the uk I just came from the UK. The sun, or Salatul Fajr, was kicking in in some parts of the UK at 6.30 a.m. And sunset, sunset, when I got there, was 3.45 p.m. Really, O oh servants of Allah. It's all about breakfast and a late lunch. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying that you are able to fast these short days and build your jannah as a result. The winter months are actually a spring for a believer to dig his streams in his or her Jannah, to build his or her palaces in his or her Jannah, to plant his or her forests in his or her Jannah. Such great ibadah with such little effort. And that is why in another narration, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about the winter that it is al-ghanimatul barida. It is the cold spoils of war. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was addressing the Sahaba, obviously, as they were those in front of him. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was the best teacher. And he would address people based on that which they understood. The Sahaba, radiallahu anhum ajma'in, they understood the mighty nature of a ghanima, the spoils that you acquire after a battle. Because before that, there is extreme high intensity. You have to pull out from yourself extreme courage, and you have to go through some trauma. You might have lost a loved one, loved one in the battle. You might have had to put your, pull yourself up many a time during the battle in the face of the enemy. After all this stress, after all this difficulty, indeed the ghanima is something special. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam attracts the attention of the sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'in by saying that these winter months Consider it the cold spoils of war. Why? Why, O servant of Allah? Because you can attain the mighty gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without much effort. The days are cool. You won't feel the fast. 
The nights are long. You can still sleep. Indeed, this is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, we are saying goodbye to the winter months. However, however, we still have time to worship Allah practicing this hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or the couple of hadiths of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that I've shared with you. This is the message, O servant of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the understanding. Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala diligently throughout every second of our lives. Ameen. Hatha wallahu a'lam. O servants of Allah and O children of Adam, the winter months give us an opportunity to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the believer, O child of Adam, is not one who sees, rather he is one who witnesses. The believer is not one who hears, rather the believer is one who listens. The believer is not one who knows, rather the believer is one who understands. The believer, O servant of Allah, witnesses Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything that he or she sees and listens about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything that he or she hears and understands Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything that he or she learns about. This is the reality of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, and this is the transformation that this article of faith brings to a human being. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the fourth juz, towards the last, towards the end of the third quarter, just before the beginning of Surah Al-Nisa, at the end of Surah Al-Imran, he says subhanahu wa ta'ala, إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَا آيَاتِ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that indeed in the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the differences in the day and the night, the differences of the day and the night, that we have some nights which are longer, and some nights which are shorter. We have some nights which are hotter and some nights which are colder. We have some nights that are peaceful with serenity and safety. And we have nights that are loud with the noise of war. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease the plight of our brothers and sisters in these lands. Ameen. This is the reality of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in these differences, are signs, are signs. Signs for who, Ya Allah? Li'ulil albab. For the people of understanding. For those who ponder. For those who reflect. Who are they, Ya Allah? Allah says, Alladheena yadhkuroon Allaha qiyaman wa qu'udan wa ala junubihim wa yatafakkaroon fi khalq al-samawati wal-ard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they are those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while standing and while sitting and while laying. They ponder over the creation of the heavens and the earth. It's not about seeing, it's about witnessing. They ponder over it. They want to witness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a result of it. And what happens to them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says their iman grows as a result. Their iman grows as a result. And they become overwhelmed. So they cry out to Allah and say, Rabbana, O oh our Lord, ma khalaqta hadha batila. Indeed, you have, not you have not created this in play. You have not created this without purpose. There's a purpose behind this creation. It's leading us to you, Ya Allah. Faqin, Rabbana faqina adhab al-nar. And then they make dua and ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect them from the hellfire. And Allah goes on to mention to us a range of dua of these people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises. Visit these ayat at the end of Surah Al-Imran. The winter months gives us a chance to worship Allah in a way that we couldn't during the summer months. Because in the winter months, we can reflect and ponder about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his creation in a way that we cannot during the summer, given the environment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings about because of the winter. Subhanallah. And when I read this ayah, and I pondered over this topic, I thought, Subhanallah. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that everyone will enter Jannah, except the one who refuses, by Allah, he is the truthful. And by Allah, he spoke the truth. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, creates a life that is dynamic to push us towards Allah even if we don't want to. Allahu Akbar. Even if you 
Even if you're not that person who has the habit of pondering and reflecting, Allah pushes us in a dimension by changing our environments, changing our circumstances, changing our situations. Understand this, O servant of Allah. A believer with every circumstance sees the new circumstance as a new way to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even when they criticize Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and insult Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and there's a big conference happening now in Doha about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even when they do it, a believer, a believer sees it as an opportunity, not as an obstacle. This is the way of la ilaha illallah, an opportunity to now worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a new way. To build our jannah in a way that we couldn't before. Subhana rabbi al-a'la. And we started this talk talking about the bounties of Allah upon us. It is Allah who pushes us and provides for us the opportunities. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us. Ameen. O oh, servants of Allah and O oh, children of Adam, on this point of reflection, ponder over the hadith in which Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam speaks about Jahannam complaining to Allah. Jahannam complained to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jahannam says, Akala ba'di ba'la. That part of me is destroying part of me. Part of me is destroying part of me. This is Jahannam. Allahu Akbar. And when I read this hadith, I thought, Subhanallah, how mighty is Jahannam? How mighty is Jahannam? And part of it can destroy part of it? A mighty part can overcome another mighty part? So can we imagine what Jahannam will do to us? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Akala ba'di ba'da. Part of me is consuming part of me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permitted it to have two breaths. One in the winter from its zamhari and one in the summer. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, the cold of the cold that you feel in the winter, it's from the breath of Jahannam. And the hottest heat you feel in the summer is from the breath, the other breath of Jahannam. This is a chance for us to ponder, O oh servant of Allah, that when we feel that cold, we remember the hereafter. We remember the grave. We remember our standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of Qiyamah. And we remember the hellfire, its hottest parts, as well as its coldest parts. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from Jahannam. Ameen. And we correct our ways. And we amend our ways. And we change ourselves. O oh servant of Allah, O oh child of Adam, has a time not come for us to become diligent human beings? Has a time not come for us to become diligent Muslims? How many more reminders do we want? Allah sent us prophets. Allah revealed to us books. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a dynamic life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directed us to his book and gave us a natural disposition that sends us to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That inner voice is calling us towards Tawheed. That inner voice is calling us towards obedience. Has a time not come for us to stop being average, for us to, for, for us to stop accepting mediocrity and start becoming the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that ummah of excellence, the ummah of excellence, the ummah that never accepts anything less than the best in everything that this ummah does. This ummah has been taught to be excellent in the ummah's worship, has been taught to be excellent with each other, has been taught to be excellent in everything that we do, with the jobs that we do, with the tasks that we take upon ourselves. We've been taught to be excellent with our children, with our spouses. We've been taught to be excellent with our colleagues and those above us and those beneath us and so on and so forth. This is the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Has a time not come for us to take heed, to learn from the signs of Allah and become guided from the signs of Allah. By Allah, I believe a time has come. It must be said that enough is enough. It must be said that enough is enough. We cannot live as human beings being average, waiting for somebody to come and lift our iman all the time. It's not sustainable, O servant of Allah. And perhaps I will touch on this talk tonight, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala, at Katara, when we uh, speak in the program directed uh, or, or related to honoring Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
We cannot be those that need speakers to come and lift our iman. And then we are only helped for a few moments when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings the winter every year to lift our iman and brings the summer every year to lift our iman and brings Ramadan every year to lift our iman and brings Laylatul Qadr every year to lift our iman and brings Dhul Hijjah every year to lift our iman. Opportunity after opportunity with us, but we keep on making excuses. Let us stop making excuses, O servant of Allah and O child of Adam. Enough is enough. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inspire us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve us in his obedience. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use us for the protection of the legacy of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cause us to die when he is pleased with us and grant us a grave which is a garden from the gardens of Jannah and grant us our book of deeds in our right hands and make us neighbors to our beloved Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ameen.